Yeah, today I wanted to speak a message about um, how you've got to like handle those that are um, outside of the faith who are not on your wavelength and who've not come to the faith. So when you're kind of, you know, going through your day-to-day -day life and you're coming up against, you're having to cross paths with disbelievers and some of you may even be working with disbelievers or, just, of course, there's many disbelievers in this world. I think there's more disbelievers than there are believers, right? personally from what I can see and so as a born-again believer you're gonna cross paths with many disbelievers okay they come with a very low vibration because they haven't been elevated yet to the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ because um, remember Jesus said take my yoke because it is light so I feel this like when I came to the faith I feel this lightness on me it's like a whole weight has been lifted off of me I can't really explain this whatever was weighing me down in the past it's just gone and it's because what Jesus said about he said take my light take my yoke because my yoke is light. Mm. So when we believe in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we believe in the word of God, and then when we put that into action, so we, we don't just believe it, we are a believer and a doer. We believe in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then we are a doer, also of the word so we live by faith hope and charity so um you know we have faith in the lord faith we have hope we don't just give up and then we're also charitable when we're needed you know because obviously the bible says that there will be poor around you there will be none poor among you but there will be poor around you. So the word of God is telling us that there will be members of the church. We're not supposed to be poor. No, we're not. Because the Bible says you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. You will be above and not below. You will be the head and not the tail. Now, are we going to believe the word of God? Because if the word of God tells us this, then we better believe it. <laughs> you know, if the word of God is telling us that we will be above and not below, that we are the head and not the tail, that we shall lend to many nations, we shall not borrow. That clearly tells you that the will of God for our life is to have more than enough well of course it of course that means that because obviously we can't lend to many nations unless we have excess <laughs> excess resources excess money we're meant to have money now i don't care what other preachers and teachers are preaching on about oh money's the root of all evil and it's evil to desire money no it's not it all depends on your perspective and your heart if your heart is that you want to help further God's kingdom and that you want to do the right thing then having money is not only going to be blessing you but it's going to be blessing all of those around you okay um, you know because if God gives you the power to become wealthy because the Bible says it is God that gives us the power to become wealthy. It's what the Bible says. Now, I know a lot of people might be looking at people of this world and saying, well, they don't believe in God. 
they're not believers, but yet they're prospering and they're millionaires and they're not even serving Jehovah. They don't even have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So how comes they've got more than enough and all this? In their case, it may not be God that gave them the, the wealth. For some of them, they've sold their soul to, unfortunately, this is really real, right? They've literally sold their soul to the devil. And what they've done, by slandering us, they've decided to do that because they've done the will of Satan. Now Satan has given them riches and wealth. Mm. So in their case, they did the will of the devil, and now the devil has given them plenty of, you know, millions and billions of pounds because they have actually slandered us in order to tread us down so they can get to the top. Now that is the will of the, <laughs> believe you me, right? <laughs> They've, they have done the will of the devil, okay? Because the Bible says that the word Satan means chief slanderer. He is the, he, the name Satan means slanderer. And he's the chief of, you know, slander. So obviously, our enemies and adversaries, or enemies, let's just say enemies, because not our adversaries are going even more far, but they're in big trouble, by the way. So let's not talk about adversaries, let's talk about enemies. But of course, an, en an adversary is an enemy, but... Right, our enemies that have gone on a, a campaign to slander me or to slander any member of the church just so they can tread on us to get to the top. Um, yeah, I mean, they're succeeding now, it seems, you know, because they've got plenty of money. They've got, like, they're prospering in the world. They have worldly success. But... Are they really, think about it, are they really as far ahead of us as we think? Because just because they're prospering in the world doesn't make them more successful than us. Because somebody might say, oh, but he's got PhD, he's got a degree, she's a lawyer, he's a lawyer, they're at the top. Yeah, they're at the top of the ladder in this world. But worldly success what what does that mean at the end of the day? Because at the end of the day, if they're not serving Jehovah God, then where are they heading with that? They're just they're just enjoying their wealth in the world and being evil and doing the will of the devil by slandering good people and slandering our names so they can get to the top and push us down to the bottom and so we're struggling at the bottom of the bottom of the ladder. And actually, let me tell you something. They are enjoying the wealth that... Oh, this is my, my little darling. They are enjoying the wealth that... Right, the, right. One man of God was saying, your enemies have got the wealth that you were meant to have. Mm. He said, many of you were destined to be wealthy. You were supposed to have wealth and honour and things like this. But they defamed many of you. They slandered your name. They tarnished your image and character. Just so that they could tread on you to get to the top and leave you struggling at the bottom of the ladder. <laughs> and he basically said that Many men and women of the church, we are supposed to be wealthy. And right now your enemies are enjoying the wealth that you were supposed to have. And they're feeding you off little bits of your own 
wealth that was supposed to your birthright yeah <clears throat> somewhere down the line the enemy has the dear god help us somewhere down the line the enemy has infiltrated our life and caused there to be a curse of lack and poverty and it's not of god Okay, and another, this guy was saying, it is not the will of God for any member of the church to be hard up, struggling, and living in poverty. That is not God's will. Believe me, how can that be God's will for us when the Bible clearly tells us that poverty is a curse? If we're living under grace, and grace means God's gift, right? We're living under grace. God has given us grace and mercy. How can we then have the curse of poverty? Je right, Jesus has given us grace, which means gift, gift of life, gift of salvation, right? Gift of salvation, having faith in the Lord, right? So if Jesus has given us grace, how do we suppose that this same Jesus would then throw us into the destruction of poverty. <laughs> Please. Jesus has given us grace. Jehovah God, God the Father has given us grace. Why would they then give us grace and then throw us in the destruction of poverty? No, the enemy has done this. You know, remember Jesus said that, that they were going through something in uh, Israel. And they asked Jesus, you know, what, what's happening or why is this? And Jesus said, the enemy has done this. You know, yes, the enemy has done this to, to many of us. In, 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 in many cases, the enemy has done this, yeah. He's taken what was supposed to be ours. Now he, our enemies who are serving him have taken what was ours. You don't understand, okay? You've got to look at this carefully. You are a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The Bible says the, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. Jehovah says it all belongs to him. I don't know the actual scripture. I can't remember it by verse, memorize. But it says the silver is mine, the gold is mine. Jehovah owns it all. So yes, if they are withholding it from us, our enemies are holding back what's supposed to be ours or not allowing us to, to like, they're keeping us out of work. So by keeping us out of work, we're not able to get the resources that are supposed to be ours or they're not allowing us to, to, to further ourselves in education or whatever we need to... To push us to the next level, they're trying to push us down. No. No, the enemy has done this. It's time for people to wake up. It's time for members of the church to wake up and say, no, no, listen, what is going on here? Okay? It is not the will of... It is the will of God for me to prosper. It is the will of God to be for me to be blessed. This is what one man of God was saying. He said, it is the will of God for me to prosper. It is the will of God for me to be blessed. So how dare any power anywhere take away what's meant to be mine? No, I reject this. Okay, he was saying we've got to wake up and look at our situation and say, look, why, why am I in this? So all we can really do is, I mean, this is all I can really suggest, and this is what I'm doing, is continue to do God's will to con continue to live by faith hope and charity so keep doing the will of god don't give up in doing good works like the bible says don't get weary don't get weary in doing the right thing continue to do so and um because the bible says oh the joys of those who are kind to the poor and needy god rescues them when they're in trouble right so or does it even say God rescues us from our enemies? I can't, again, I'm just speaking off the top of my head here. I believe 
it means God rescues you from your enemies when you help those who are poor and needy. Mm. So when you're charitable to people who are even less fortunate than you, for example, like we're not the most down and out people, a lot of us members of the church, we, we you know, we still can see blessings around us, even if we're on uh, benefits, you know, even if we're on government funded benefits, a lot of us are, we're out of work, I know. But that doesn't mean that we're not blessed because it is obviously God that allows us to have provision through whatever means we have, you know. So I'm not trying to be ungrateful. I'm not saying, oh, we've got to be ungrateful. And I'm always thanking God every day. I say, thank you, Lord, for, you know, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for every day. Thank you for sunrise, Lord. Thank you for rain, Lord. Thank you for shelter. Thank you for food. Thank you for clothing. Thank you for shoes. Thank you for my daughter. I've got a couple of cats. I love my cats. Thank you for my animals. You know, I just thank God for the little, what seems to be little, but to me are, you know, still important things. So, yes, I believe we have to be in a state of thankfulness as well all the time. But what I want to say is that we have to wake up and realize that this is the case. <laughs> um, as Jesus told, was it the disciples when he said, he said, the enemy has done this. They were going through something in uh, Israel and they were just wondering why was it that they were going through what well, whatever was going through, what they were all going through, you know. Because you see, those times were very difficult. When Jesus came to the earth, he entered a time that was very difficult. You know, it was, it was very difficult. And I think they weren't having a very easy time at all. Not at all. Very tough time. Very difficult. So that's why I'm trying to, we've got to try and be happy because now we're living in the mercy days. These are the mercy days. And even if we're out of work and, you know, we're not prospering as we believe we should be, I can only say that we can just keep doing the will of God, living by faith, hope and charity and putting our faith into the Lord and then asking God to deliver us in his mercy because obviously deliverance is needed deliverance is needed because when you wake up and you realize like hey what what happened why why am i in this situation because many people may be looking at their situation wondering you know what what's happening here you know what what what's happening why am i in this nonsense of a situation you know um we don't want to spend the rest of our life in the wilderness not having real direction. We want to reach our destination. You understand? Your destination, your destiny. Where you're supposed to be at in your life. Where I'm supposed to be at and where many of us are supposed to be at. You want to, you want to reach your destination. You don't want to spend all your days wandering in the wilderness of your life. You know, wilderness season has to come to an end and we have to reach our destination. Um, but I, obviously I think, yeah, I think that I, what I'm realising is a lot of us are grumbling. I've been also guilty of all this grumbling and really being very up uptight about my situation. Like, why is my situation such as this, you know, um... And I think, okay, we're going to have to try to maybe be more thankful and such because the children of Israel went in circles in the wilderness because they kept on complaining, you know. Now, 
to me that's a lesson because I'm thinking yeah they kept on complaining and all they did all day long was complain about the situation that it was too difficult it was too difficult they needed water they were hungry do you remember when you watched the film they were saying Moses we're hungry Moses we're thirsty uh, we're hungry. Oh, how long is this going to take? Oh, this is taking too long. Let's just go back to Egypt. It was better there. We had food. We had we had uh, salad and cucumber, and we had everything we needed. Now look at this. Look at this horrible place God has, you know, and they were just, they were losing faith. They were losing faith. Even though the pillar of light was guiding them through the wilderness, you know, um, they were still losing faith and God was there, you know. I mean, I can understand, obviously, being thirsty and hungry is not good, but they must have known that God would take care of them if he, if he had got them through the Red Sea, you know, when the Egyptian army was chasing them and trying to, pers wouldn't stop pursuing them. Obviously, God got them through that situation. He got them through the Red Sea. So they crossed over the other side safely and yet the Egyptian army was crushed under the might of the Red Sea you know God brought the God brought the walls of the Red Sea crushing down on the Egyptian army and they were crushed crushed to death by the weight of the water of the Red Sea now they witnessed all of this and yet they still lost hope and some of us we haven't even witnessed anything like this, okay? So, you know, it was kind of shocking that a lot that they did um, kind of get into that real state of despair um, and that they, 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 they weren't just patient. Apparently, that was only meant to take a few days. They were going to get there in a few days if they'd have just persevered. And what one man of God was saying was, what was supposed to just take a few days, they never got there. And it turned into 40 years of them going round in a circle in the wilderness. So that's really awful. If they'd have just known it was just going to take a few days, just persevere, they would have just done everything to just be patient and get there. You understand? They'd have just, just been patient. All of them would have said, yeah, we're going to be there in a few days. Let's just let's just be patient and persevere. We're going to get there. But they didn't. And they're saying, one man of God was saying that the pillar of uh, cloud or the pillar of light, what it did was it took them round in circles. So a journey that was supposed to just be a few days turned into 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And they never got to the promised land. I think it was, was it their children's children got there? So they were supposed to get to the promised land. That was their destination. And that's what I'm saying. A lot of us are still in our wilderness season. And if we don't kind of get the, the right perspective and the right um, <clears throat> attitude of, okay, this I don't like this um, wilderness season that I'm in, but I'm going to have to persevere and, um, you know, be thankful to the Lord Maybe in a season like this, many of us should just be being extra thankful to the Lord. Maybe, you know, praising the Lord more, being thankful more and doing what we can to to have the right perspective. So we don't end up like the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. You know, it, apparently the man of God said what a tragedy that was they were meant to be there in just a few days and they ended up being what they ended up wandering in the wilderness I think it was when they built the golden cow and started worshipping that when Moses was on the mountain and then they were drinking and then they were fornicating and partying I think they went into partying apparently and they started getting drunk and fornicating so I think that may have offended the Lord greatly that they started to go into the sin of fornication. You know, it could have been that, um, but perhaps it was that and the complaining all mixed together. But then they were left wandering for 40 years in the wilderness. So what I want to say is that um, we're going to have to think clearly 
about our situation that we're in. We don't want to be wandering in the wilderness like that. So whatever wilderness season we're in, we want the Lord to get us out and take us to our destination, wherever that is. Because um, obviously, I believe that everyone has a destiny in this life. There's a lot of people might say, oh, our destiny is the afterlife. Don't worry about it. No, but even in this life, you have a destiny. Because the Bible says the newness of life is now. The newness of life is now. It doesn't say you have to wait to the afterlife before you can have the newness of life. The newness of life is right now. When you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, it starts now. It begins right now. So whatever, whatever, you see, the Bible says a great and effectual door has been opened unto us. And there are many adversaries. So it could be that there is a door, there's an open door somewhere. Because one man of God was saying, any gang up of the adversary surrounding your open door, he was saying like, just pray because there's an open door somewhere for many of you and perhaps for me also it could be an open door of a job opportunity it could be an open door of education it could be an open door of marriage there's an open door somewhere and they're trying to block it but let me tell you something right the 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 the, the uh, plan of the enemy shall not prevail it shall not prevail because whatever you're supposed to be doing in your life, whatever your destiny is in your life, you must get to your destiny. The same as I. I must get to my destiny, whatever it is. Okay? Everyone has a destiny in this world as well. Yes, our afterlife is also destiny. But we have uh, things to accomplish in this life also. So... It doesn't matter what gang up of the adversary or whomever is trying to block your open door. They're going to have to give way. Because what will happen is if they continue to do so, the Lord, the Lord Jehovah God, he will intervene. And if you say, Lord, whoever's blocking this destiny of mine, I don't know what it is, whether it be fine, whether it be educational, whether it be... Um, a career or a marriage whatever it is whatever my destiny is I will have what I'm supposed to have I will reach my destination whether the enemy likes it or not and this is the kind of faith that you've got to have you've got to say no this is not a negotiation this is not negotiable okay that's all I want to say that this is quite a serious message, but it's a message that needs to be spoken, okay? That it's time for you to be fulfilling purpose and destiny, and me also, and all of the church members. It's not time for games anymore, the, any games of the enemies and all this rubbish. Those days are over. Okay, thank you. I hope the message was received. God bless you, and I wish you a good day. Thank you.